Hello and now welcome to the Korea community call number 8 and uh, today we'll be exploring the topic of powering up your static website using custom domains and free hosting uh, on Korea. So just to introduce myself, my name is Yomal Pereira. I'm a software engineer in the IDevP team at Corio, uh, the product. And uh, today's agenda will be looking firstly about web apps and static websites and what the differences are and how you would use them in your day-to-day -day life, like what are the use cases for both these uh, types of uh, sites. And next we'll be looking at custom domains, how you can use them to improve your static website. And then in order to protect your custom domain, we'll be looking at the different, different types of security technologies like Let's Encrypt and custom certificates. And then finally, we'll do a small demonstration about how all these features will be shown on Corio itself. So with that out of the way, let's begin. So what are static websites? Uh, simply put, they are a collection of pre-rendered HTML pages which are delivered to the customer or the client uh, as it is without any uh, server-side processing, uh, any sort of interaction and uh, because they are delivered as it is, they are quick to come to the client and uh, they, are they are faster to load and easier to cache in certain Content dealer networks or CDNs. So they are fi they have fixed content. So because of that, they are the use cases for these kind of static websites would be uh, portfolio websites or personal blogs or a documentation site for an API you created. So those sort of use cases are the prime examples for static websites. And if we look at web apps, they are the complete opposite of static websites which is to say they are very interactive and dynamic uh, and it changes from client to client based on uh, who's accessing it so because of this they have they are very complex in nature because you need to maintain the the states and who's interacting with them who's accessing them so there's a lot of server side processing uh, happening in web apps and there's also dynamic content generation based on who's using it. It'll change the look or the view and all. Uh, and there's also user interactions and real-time updates. So right now you're looking through a web app, which is YouTube. Uh, so different people see different videos in their own browser. So like that, there's a lot of server-side processing and it's different for each user. And they're built using uh, more complex frameworks like React or Vue or Angular. And the use cases for these are most commonly e-commerce sites, social network websites, or software as a service, or even video streaming applications like this one. So those are the differences uh, like between the two. If we look at a comparison between web apps and static websites, we can see that from the performance side, uh, static websites are very quick to be delivered because they're already pre-rendered and they're static in nature. They're just some HTML pages that are delivered straight to the client. Uh, but on the other hand, web apps may have sl uh, slow initial load times because they need to process who's accessing the web app and then deliver the necessary content. Uh, so performance-wise, static websites are fast, but web apps have more uh, interaction and more versatility and if you look at scalability again static websites are easy to scale because each user gets the same page there's no processing involved but web apps you need to know who's you accessing it you need to have a certain state management and uh, depending on that it requires certain complex infrastructure and scaling strategies uh, because of that Static websites are easy to scale. Web apps aren't as easy as static websites. Uh, interactivity, again, web apps are highly interactive. They are primarily user driven, but uh, static websites have limited, if not uh, like none at all uh, interactivity. And it's the basic purpose is for information, like primary informational in nature. 
and the development complexity again static websites are very simple to develop but just a bunch of HTML pages but web apps are complex because there's uh, interaction and dynamic server-side processing going on and that's basically the difference between the two and in this demo we'll be looking at static websites and how to host them and uh, so once you have a static website you'll be looking at how to assign a custom domain so what are custom domains so custom domains are primarily like the unique and branded domains that you own so they would most likely be your name or your workplace or if it's the case of an API, the API name. Uh, so like it's seen here, it's a unique branded domain, yourbrand.com. So the benefits of this are it enhances the identity and the brand you bring. So once you meet someone and you don't know their name, you know directly to go to their website to check on what, who they are and what they do. So that sort of identity is built into the custom domain and obviously it's better for search engine ranking once you search it uh, you can get the site as soon as like at the top uh, and search engines are most uh, geared towards those kind of custom domains rather than a random generated url and uh, if you have a custom domain it increases the user's trust in you it shows that you are committed to actually delivering a quality product uh, and it in increases the engagement of that as well right so once you have a custom domain you would need to secure it so securing a uh, securing a website basically means adding TLS or SSL certificates onto it so on Corio you have two different ways of how to do that uh, one is let's encrypt and uh, another is importing your own custom certificates so look at let's look at the difference between the two so let's encrypt is basically a public server where you send a request saying I need a certificate for my domain and they will send a request to that domain with a certain randomly generated parameter and once you get that it'll send like your job is to send that parameter back to the let's encrypt server and it'll match the two and then verify that you have ownership of this domain and once once it's done that it will uh, generate the certificates required to enable this TLS uh, security onto your website. So Courier does this all automatically within its uh, infrastructure. So because of that, Let's Encrypt is free, it's automated, and does little if not at all manual configuration from the user's side. We'll see this in the demonstration in the, uh, in the, the dem yeah, we'll see this in the demonstration. Uh, but on the other hand, custom certificates are something you have to manage. So it's all about manual configuration. But uh, it brings with it uh, advanced security. You can uh, configure what sort of security provider you want uh, rather than a free one like Let's Encrypt. So you can uh, ver like verify which issuer you want and then manually configure it so that your website is secure using those certificates. So the key differences are the flexibility. Custom certificates offer more options. You can build your security more robust using that. But uh, Let's Encrypt is, uh, in terms of cost and ease, very easy. All you need to do is, yeah, from the courier side, just click that you want Let's Encrypt, and all of it is handled within a platform. Uh, and custom certificates can get expensive as well because you'll be paying the certain issuer directly saying I want this specific certificate and also custom certificates need to be manually configured like the when it's close to expiring you need to renew it yourself and add it back into Corio. but if you select let's encrypt it's all managed within Corio, no manual renewal uh, required so those are basically the features related to static websites and how to use the custom domain and then secure that custom domain so now let's look directly at the demonstration. So I have two sites, uh, a portfolio website and a blog website. So I will be uh, adding this to my uh, organization. So first and foremost, we need to create a project. I'll name this as a community call. So once that's done, I'll create it. 
and then let's uh, first build like create both of our components separately so we'll select the web application type and uh, in Corio web apps uh, have a bundled in static website build pack and that's how you select it here so let's first create the blog um, and then uh, copy this link so basically you're providing Corio with the repository URL which is needed to get the files into Corio itself and then you select static website and then this is basically asking the context where those files are located since this blog has all the files in the root uh, folder we'll just leave it as it is and then uh, click create and then uh, Corio will just verify the repository URL and all those things and then it'll create the component and initialize it so this is the overview page of your blog component so now what you need to do is you need to build your component which is to say you need to create uh, an image using your files so you can just straight away click build latest which takes the latest commit and then builds using the files on that commit or you have the option to click show commits and select the commit you want so since this is up to date we'll just use the latest one so we just click build latest and it'll start building your static website mm, we'll just wait until the workflow starts and then we'll go and create our other component as well All right this has started while this is going on uh, we'll create our portfolio website and then copy this and then edit here okay he'll do a validation here and then you click static website and again just select the root repository or if you have uh, a folder uh, in the repository you just click that and then you create it again just like before so now there's two components one for the blog uh, website and another for the portfolio website and just like the blog website we have to build this as well I just straight away click build latest and we'll start the workflow to build it so until this is coming I'll just mention the two hosting providers I decided to select one is a free uh, hosting website called DNS exit so I already uh, got this domain sample portfolio work gd since it's a free website free uh, hosting website these sort of urls will be given to you not necessarily nice ones because those require payment which is why i have another one in godaddy which is a paid uh, hosting website so i have this domain called yomas blog online i'll use this for the blog uh, component and uh, we'll just check on this right it seems to be built i'll just check the other one as well yep it's also built so we'll be de start deploying both these components so that you can invoke using the uh, url right so once you click configure and deploy you have the option of adding some configurations if required if you have any internal logic running on certain configurations but since ours does not have any such uh, configurations we just straight away deploy it and then first we'll go into the development environment where you can test it out see if it works uh, so we can see that the deployment has started it's in progress and this will be the URL given by Corio and as you can see it's uh, not necessarily a nice URL it's having some random numbers so you can't show this to the general public you won't necessarily get any sort of recognition or it's hard to memorize and such so since this is deployed uh, we'll just check whether this works and yep so you can see the blog is invocable so like that we'll promote this 
and then you have the option of using just like before the development configurations or adding new configurations we just go with the development configurations and then yeah promote it and then just like that the same image is then promoted to the production so now this is what will be available to the public itself so you can see here we have given the option to create like a small short URL so using the domain of courier apps uh, dev you can add like a blog so it'll show that uh, it'll preview your URL before that so if you add a short URL prefix it'll just add blog.couriapps.dev so users can it's better than the randomly generated number one so you can add save this and then if you give uh, it some time so you can see now the URL changed to blog.couriapps.dev so this is a better uh, compromise related to the random numbers so if I just refresh this and go to this it's still invocable using the same one so just go to all the different pages it's all working so just like that you can if you don't want to uh, configure any custom domains you can just add this and use this also it's perfectly fine as well uh, we'll also deploy the portfolio website at the same time mm. Yeah, it's built and just like the blog website will deploy this to production uh, you need to go step by step first deploy it to development and then test it out and then if it's okay then you go directly to production so just like these static websites you can even bring your own source code for web apps and then use them as well um, then I'll just promote this to production Okay, seems like both are deployed. This is in progress, should be okay in a bit. Yeah, okay. Now that that's also deployed, let's just invoke it and see whether it works. Right, so just a random, like a uh, sample portfolio website for a software engineer named Neil Peters. Just the name. Alright, so now that both my blog and portfolio websites are up and running now let's configure both of them using custom domains so for the blog uh, website uh, let's start with the portfolio one so the portfolio website i'll be using the free dns hosting website dns exit so i've let's just start with the courier itself so the way to start it is you need to go into the organization level and then go to the settings page uh, and then you'll see a tab here called URL settings this is where you have to configure your custom domain so you can see the active domains so we want to add a new domain to our organization so here www dot so you copy your yeah, let's see. So this is the domain name that you're saying you own and the custom domain you want to configure and the environment is which environment do you want to configure it for since we want it used in the production environment we'll just select the production us and since this is a web app uh, type component we have to select web app and this url is what you will be using in your hosting site as the cm or the canonical name this is basically what is used to say that okay if any requests come to this uh, domain point it to this host which is Corio's internal host so Corio keeps like uh, this domain like the site using this domain but if any other, any requests come to your domain the custom domain then it will automatically redirect to uh, Corio's one which is where the your website is hosted finally so what you need to do is you need to configure your C name in your hosting site to say that using the www.subdomain and this your own custom domain 
point it to this so once it's configured like that uh, all you need to do is verify that uh, you have configured the CNAME properly and uh, once it's done you should be okay uh, and just go next and here we'll be using uh, certificates for my uh, color, the portfolio website so most uh, if not all hosting websites have their own uh, TLS configuration so all you need to do is go to manage your DNS sorry I need to log in again okay login right so for this uh, domain, I already configured my uh, SSL um, certificates. So if I go to this, right. So you can see here called uh, Manage Digital Certificates. So this is where the site maintains all the certificates for my uh, domain. So what you need to do is you need to download the certificates and keep them in your uh, computer and then upload them directly to Corio. So I've already done those things. So if I click import certificates and click select file for this TLS certificate, you can see here, this is the certificate for my domain. And this is the key for the certificate. And this is the chain file. So a chain file is basically uh, a chain of certificates which verifies from your domain to the root uh, certificate so there is a final issuer or source certificate that is usually a very long-standing certificate which most uh, websites uh, verify and know so this chain file is used to link your domain to that original domain so once all this is done all you need to do is click add and it should work now. so yeah so you can see now Corio, your organization has the custom domain configured. It uh, keeps the certificate status. It's all that data is within the certificate that you provided. So it's expiring within three months. It provides you with that information. So it's configured for the web app type. Uh, the environment is the production and it's a custom certificate configured. So since this is configured, we'll also add a uh, uh, paid domain which is the umallblogs.online website so just like before let's just add the domain and then the environment is production and then the web app type so just like before you copy the final value for the c name and you add it in this so you can see the name is the subdomain and then i've already added the custom the in the Corio's own uh, domain. So just like before, the CNAME points any requests that come to this domain, it sends it directly to Corio's domain. So since I already configured it, this should uh, verify it quickly. And then you just click next. So for this website, I'll be using Let's Encrypt, which is all handled within Corio. So all you need to do is just select it and add it. Everything else uh, is managed within Corio. If it needs renewal, it will do it within Corio itself. So you don't, there's no hassle involved of configuring your own certificates and handling them and managing them. It's all managed within Corio. So this is the ideal choice if you don't want to go through the hassle of it. So now we have both our custom domains within Corio, our organization. So the blog uh, site, and the portfolio one as well so now we'll go back to our deployed component so let's go with the blog one first so now this is yeah it's deployed now in production but now we need to link the domain to this specific uh, production environment so within the organization settings, you just say, okay, within this environment, uh, you just point it to this environment, but we need to configure saying this link is what should be shown, this specific component. So if you go to the settings, 
and then this is the component settings and then the URL settings of the component we can see that the custom URL is not configured for both environments but since there is a production environment link available this will be enabled this action so edit URL mapping so you click this so the production the environment is production the default URL or the URL shown within the production deployment is this so which custom URL you want you just select here since I want the blog uh, e-domain I click this and you can see the domain is like this and the customized URL is like that so you just click configure and what it does it it sends a request to the organization level uh, asking for permission so this is ideal if you have a huge organization with different uh, components different developers working on different components so rather than they uh, you configure it in the organization settings rather than them going and configure it themselves there could be a conflict uh, you have an organization admin verifying it so that there is no conflict between components so this uh, you go back to organization settings and then click URL settings again and you'll see this tab saying pending URL requests. Once you go to this tab, you will see that there is a pending request for this specific domain, this custom domain, from the web app type, the environment, community call, from this component and the owner as in the who made the request uh, is also mentioned here and all you need to do is approve it. Once you click that, it will give a brief overview again about what you're approving. So it's in the project component, uh, the project community call. The component is the blog component type, the environment, and the default URL, which is that URL it's pointing to, and the map URL, which is the custom domain. And once you click approve, Corio creates that connection within itself. And if you go back, to the blog website, the blog component, you should see the URL. Oh, yeah. See, it's approved. So now this is live. Your uh, your custom domain should be pointing to this specific deployment. So if you go back to the deploy page and look at the production environment, you should see the web app URL change to the custom domain that you configured. So we go let's just visit this and see uh, it takes a bit of time from the Korea side because it needs to configure all the let's encrypt certificates and then create the mapping but yeah it works so you can see I just use the custom domain that I configured Umal's blog online and it goes directly here so you can just use it just like any other thing the sub parts are using the same uh, custom domain um, yeah so that's how you configure your custom domain with let's encrypt uh, certificates but then now let's look at whether our imported certificates work as well so just like before uh, you go to the component settings and then if you look at the URL settings uh, you would see that it's not configured for any custom domain but uh, you know that you need to add it to your production environment and there is one available which is why this is enabled and this is disabled we haven't configured any custom domains for the development environment so if there are any available this will be enabled as well but since we only have ones in production environment enabled we just select this and then the default URL is shown and the domain you want is the portfolio uh, one that's added into the organization settings so what it's, it's saying here is this is the domain and the customized URL will be this so you just click configure and just like before the request is sent to the organization settings so if we go back to the organization and look at the URL settings and the pending URL requests you should see just like before the custom URL uh, domain of sample portfolio and the request is coming from the community call project from the component portfolio and from the user UML at wso.com so again you just approve the request 
and the overview is shown here with the default URL and the mapped URL and you click approve and it should now send a request back to your component saying okay it's approved use this uh, new custom domain to point it to the production deployment of your component if you go back into our component you should see the URL being mapped properly yep so you see the custom URL sample portfolio uh, work.gd is mapped to the production environments URL uh, seen here and it's approved so it should be running in the deployment itself if you look okay so see the web app URL has changed to our custom domain so just like before we should give it a bit of time because now it's using the imported certificates rather than let's encrypt so all that information should be mapped within Corio itself and you should have the secure website so seems it's still loading Let's just give it a bit of time so uh, just like that we have our imported certificate uh, portfolio website secured as you can see here so that pretty much sums up the demonstration on Corio let's go back to uh, presentation and so what we basically learned is using Corio we can host our own static website and then configure the custom domain onto it and then have its own security layer on top of it either it's let's encrypt or using your own imported certificates so that pretty much wraps up today's community call and if you want to reach out to us in any way you can use our discord channel link uh, and keep up to if you want to keep up to date with Corio and any updates you can follow us on Twitter uh, in this link and then if you want to sign up to Corio anytime just follow wso.com slash Corio uh, all the social media channel links will be in the description below thank you and have a good day